just uh, uh, switch tracks because you you wear so many different hats. And uh, coming years, I mean, from now till about 2017, 18, will be very interesting for Mandarin because not only in the UV space automotive sector, but also in the two-wheeler space as well. Uh, you have the Mojo coming up. We have seen some uh, reviews. How do you plan to and how do you see the next two years panning out for the the two-wheeler business? Well, there is a lot of excitement in the air, uh, uh, as you said that uh, with uh, the different hats that I that I wear, there is uh, never lack of uh, uh, excitement in, in in my day. Uh, on the two-wheeler side, uh, uh, we have uh, sort of uh, three tracks going, uh, more than three actually. Uh, one is what we're doing in the in the motorcycle, the commuter motorcycle segment with Centuro. Second is what we're doing in the Gusto range uh, for the scooters. And third is what we're doing with Mozo. Now, Mozo clearly is not something that's going to be huge volume, uh, but it's something that will establish Mahindra as a, uh, as a sort of desired brand uh, in, in, in two wheelers. Uh, and we have worked very hard at Mozo. It's per perhaps uh, uh, in terms of two-wheeler anticipation, it's the longest anticipated uh, two-wheeler that is that is coming in the market. Uh, and 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 finally, finally, it's coming out, and uh, I'm very happy with the results. Everybody who has uh, test driven the, the the Mozo is really excited about uh, how it has everything has come together well. Now, sometimes you you put all the right pieces together, but it doesn't come together very well. In this case, the engine, the where the engine so sounds, the ride, the the, the, the whole drivability, the, the comfort, everything has come, come, come across very well. And I'm, I'm, I'm very hopeful that the Mozo will do wonders for our brand as a two-wheeler brand. Uh, at the same time, uh, the efforts that we have put into our uh, uh, whole marketing communication uh, with aggressive campaign that we have done recently for, for uh, Gusto and Centuro is paying dividends for us. And therefore, I would expect to start seeing the volumes uh, uh, growing. They're already growing, but still still very small base. And, and we will be offering variants uh, of higher CCs because there is uh, some sort of move towards uh, 125 CC, 150 CC kind of bikes and scooters. So we are going to be putting in more and more effort into that. So that's that's the track that we are doing here in India. At the same time, we have the PMTC piece uh, where uh, we have acquired 51% uh, ownership of PMTC, uh, and, and and they have a very different range of scooters, uh, more premium, more higher end, uh, as is the case for all European uh, scooters. Uh, and we see some opportunities for India uh, in future, not not immediately. And we're working on it right now yeah. to see how do we bring some of those PMTC scooters uh, into India. Uh, I know that if we uh, could price it right, yes. it will create uh, uh, a lot of demand pull uh, for the scooters because because they're very different yes. and they're in a different class. Uh, but but the challenge is to price them right, and that's what we're working on right now uh, to see how we get it at a price point that the Indian consumer will be happy with. So what kind of price point do you think an Indian consumer would know? I mean, would be able to pay given that you know its brand positioning and that. Well, that uh, that uh, we cannot talk about right now. We are working on that, uh, and uh, what we have found, all I can say is that uh, the premium that the Indian consumer is willing to pay uh, is not as high as the cost that okay. goes into making these, uh, these scooters as of now. So we have to work very hard on getting the cost. And the Mojo, uh, when when can we expect the Mojo? Mojo will be launching very shortly. Okay. Uh, we have started uh, started pre uh, pre booking hmm. at ten thousand rupees. I think you can go and and, and, and book a mozo. We started that, and very soon we'll be launching. It. And also, uh, your recent move of the Mahindra Racing base from uh, Switzerland to Italy, uh, I believe the the engineering there base there will also play a key role in your. Uh, road going uh, to yes, wheel. both uh, for two wheeler as well as electric vehicles. Uh, since we are participating in Formula E and and in the MotoGP, yeah. uh, both of these uh, will have a, a sort of technology flow into our two wheeler business and into our electric vehicle business, and and, and we are counting on that. Doctor Goenka, with with the moves in the compact SUV segment, especially with the S one hundred one, it will also mark uh, Mahindra's entry into the petrol passenger vehicle uh, segment. Now, Mahindra is well established as a maker of diesel rugged SUVs. How do you plan to go about you know, making the customer comfortable in kind of accepting uh, buying a vehicle, petrol Mahindra vehicle? Well, uh, for any uh, mainstream manufacturer, uh, one has to evolve as times change. Uh, it's clear that in India, one cannot count only on diesel uh, vehicles anymore. Uh, there will be pressure uh, to uh, have more and more of non-diesel vehicles coming into our vehicles. I don't necessarily like or don't necessarily agree uh, with the move of sort of downplaying diesel because I think diesel is a very good fuel and I am very proud that Mahindra has very good diesel offerings. But at the same time, the reality is that there will be pressures to, to move away from diesel. And therefore, we have a very robust uh, strategy on how we will uh, sort of uh, 
gasolinized or petrolized, I don't know what the word will be, but how will we move into the petrol vehicles, gasoline vehicles in our, in, in, in for our, all our product offerings. Obviously not for the high-end commercial vehicles or uh, larger commercial vehicles, but for the passenger vehicles. Uh, we are currently working on a series of petrol engines. Our partnership with Sangyong also is helpful in that. Uh, so we are bringing out with S101 our first petrol engine, uh, ground up development 1.2 litre petrol engine. And uh, having driven the petrol vehicle right now, I don't think that uh, I have any concern on how we will make our entry uh, as a petrol vehicle or petrol engine manufacturer. The, 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 engine, the engine drives as well as any other engine in that, uh, in that, that, that size uh, that you will have today. We are also working then on a larger 1.5 uh, liter petrol engine for mid-size vehicles. Uh, and we already have a two liter petrol engine that we're not using in India, but we're exporting outside India. Uh, we also have access uh, to uh, Sangyong's 1.6 litre petrol engine and Sangyong's 2 litre petrol engine. So between the 1.2, the 1.5, 1.6 and the 2 of Mahindra and 2 of Sangyong, mm -hmm. we are well covered. Okay. And therefore, uh, in a few years from now, mm -hmm. maybe 3 years, maybe 4 years, mm -hmm. uh, any vehicle that we launch uh, in the passenger vehicle segment will have uh, a, a diesel vehicle. and a petrol ops. I see. At the inauguration of MRV, it also mentioned then in 2012 that in three years, three to four years from now, from then, you would have, you would be ready with a full hybrid. Now with the government uh, kind of coming up with the FAME scheme, first, are you ready with the uh, hybrid kind of powertrain? And secondly, if yes, no, are you somewhere looking at the kind of... Well, we are, we are still working on the hybrids. It's mm. uh, taken us, let me admit, longer than what we thought it would take. But our thrust right now mm. is more on pure electric vehicles uh, through Mahindra Reva. And uh, most of our uh, sort of uh, clean energy or non-conventional energy uh, effort uh, that we're putting in is going in the electric vehicle, electric vehicle direction. Uh, we already have our E2O, which uh, thanks to the FAME uh, uh, scheme is now uh, picking up uh, slowly in, our, in, our, in, the, in the sales volume. We have other uh, products uh, that we are working on with electric vehicles. And we do think that uh, Mahindra hopefully I will be able to take a lead in electric vehicles in India. Right now, we are the only manufacturer, so a very small volume, but uh, we'll continue to, to, to work on it. So while we are still working on hybrid, uh, the focus right now is on electric vehicles. And talking about electric vehicles, on the two-wheeler side, you have Gen Z in, in Silicon Valley. First, uh, what's the status there? I mean, have you introduced it commercially, and uh, do you see any kind of benefits here? At, uh, for Gen Z scooter uh, is about to be launched in US, uh, and it's a very nice looking scooter, uh, and that drives very well. But the problem is same as PMTC. Uh, okay. While there will be a good market uh, yeah. for a scooter like that in India, but at a price point, okay. which is much lower than what uh, the current vehicle, if made in India, would be. Uh, I, I would hope that someday we can bring that into India at a, at a, at a price point uh, right for the Indian Indian mm -hmm. segment. But right now our focus, our thrust fully is on launching Gen Z in, in US mm -hmm. uh, because this was a vehicle that was designed ground up for the US market. It was mm -hmm. not designed for Indian market and then exported to US. It was designed for the US market. And we will then be looking at once we've stabilized in the US market, we've taken more in the European market mm -hmm. where again it will be very uh, v very good offering uh, because Europe also is having an enough thrust on electric vehicles. So India will be uh, lower in the priority uh, in terms of how the Gen Z moves from US to, uh, to, to, to this side of the world. Would China also figure somewhere in that strategy because of the uh, new energy vehicle policy? The huge, price point, the price point is a problem price there. Point also. Is the price issue. point is a problem there mm. also. Uh, in, in in US, we are talking about a price point of about three thousand yes. uh, dollars. Three thousand dollars is too expensive for you mm. for for India. The Silicon Valley, the North American Technical Center, now Italy, uh, MRV, trying to build a robust network for engineering and R and D activities. Could you throw some light on how do you see this uh, kind of integrating uh, together and uh, which which ones will be the centers of excellence in which fields? Yeah, so uh, it's a, it's a, it's a evolution that's happening. Uh, it it is very clear that uh, the technology in automotive uh, world is moving very rapidly. Uh, while one customer may not see it because a car looks like a car uh, for last hundred years, but there is a lot that's happening uh, under the hood. Lots that's happening inside the passenger compartment in terms of safety, in terms of wa light weighting, in terms of emission regulations, uh, the expectation of features, connected cars, ride and handling, everything. Uh, and, and, and therefore, we have to, while we, we develop technology ground up here in India, we also have to keep our eyes on what is happening around the world and take the technology off the shelf rather than every time coming here and saying, I'm going to develop everything ground up in Chennai. Uh, that, that, will, that will sort of leave us behind. So what we are doing is uh, a, a 
a, a very good mix, I think, of homegrown technology, uh, starting from uh, starting with GETs who come and join us fresh out of college and work on new technologies, to using very experienced engineers uh, in in Detroit through MNATC who have been working 30, 35, 40 years and in, in for, for various OEMs and tier one suppliers, and uh, the model is working very well. Uh, right now, we have about 100 people in MNATC and about 2,000 people in MRV. Uh, and the model is working very well where these 100 people are doing a dual job mm. of A, creating a new vehicle ground up mm. uh, for India. Mm. So this is probably the first time that a vehicle is being developed in USA for India. I see. Uh, but developing a vehicle up front, uh, ground up for that. Plus also uh, kind of having uh, uh, functional experts uh, who are able to provide uh, a sort of consultancy, if I could call it, or guidance to our young team here in some cases uh, where we may have 50, 100 engineers working in, in a certain technology uh, and one or two people at MNATC will be able to provide guidance through a very good communication network available now through telepresence and video conferencing or uh, traveling uh, back and forth. Then we have our small uh, <coughs> sort of technical uh, center in, uh, in Torino called MGRD uh, which is primarily focusing on body and trim design uh, and, and we are able to therefore get some high end uh, body engineering done from there uh, and, and, and use the mix of Torino, Detroit and uh, Chennai uh, as, uh, as, as, as a way to get the best of three words, okay. so to say. Uh, in addition to that, we do go to consultants, even in spite of that, we do go to consultants you know, for specific projects, uh, for specific areas in a project to sort of tap into the ecosystem uh, of a country or a region. Uh, so like uh, for UV300, we have used Printfrena a uh, little bit to help our team here, uh, both in design as well as in engineering. Uh, for S101, uh, we will talk about who we have used, but there also we have used an outside outside company to work with our team a little bit to help us with mm -hmm. some parts of uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. uh, so so it's uh, even for UV300 for final write and handling, suspension yes. tuning, we uh -huh. have gone to a company in US and that have worked with us, a small unknown company but work very closely with us uh, to, to tune the ride and handling and you will see the results of that when you test drive this vehicle. Mm -hmm. Come out very, very nice. I'm very happy with it. So so we, we, we keep using, uh, of course, for engine, we have been using AVL for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, we are almost like part of yes. our team. Uh, Starting with the 2.6 uh, time uh, From from 2.6 liter NEF yeah. engine. Uh, and every engine that we are working, that we develop, uh, there is a role that AVL plays in that. Right. So it's again a judicious mix of outside consultants, our sort of uh, offshore okay. technical centers in Torino and Detroit and what we do in MRV. Then of course there is Sangyong uh, in, 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 in Korea uh, and there is good cooperation happening between our MRV engineers and Sangyong engineers on specific things, extending notes, uh, reviewing the work done by one uh, and by the other uh, and giving some inputs here and there. Not, nothing, nothing very formal right now, but, uh, but a good interaction happening in a specific area between, between these experts. And, and this project which you said uh, being uh, under development at MNETC, what kind of profile would it be? Uh, or when, what the time, when the time is right. When the time is right. But uh, so. it can tell us how far, uh, no, I mean. It's not a passenger car. That's, okay. all, that's all I can tell you. <laughs> so talking about uh, technologies, uh, uh, autonomous driving, that's the flavor of the all global automotive industry. Um, it's been there for some time, but also now new challenges coming up, for example, like hacking and all that. Do you think India is ready any time um, for any level of autonomous driving, even if say base or mid-level of autonomous uh, drivers? Yeah, Sumantra, it's a very uh, interesting question uh, and uh, the immediate reaction will be no. Okay. That's, uh, if you ask anybody, uh, is India ready for it? So, no, even with drivers, we don't know how to drive the car. <laughs> Without drivers, how will we ever know how to drive the car? We won't know. So that's the immediate response, okay? However, um, if you reflect on how India picks up new technologies in any 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 uh, sphere, any any segment, any product range, you would find that uh, Indian consumers surprise us. So I won't bet on my money on saying that India will not uh, pick up uh, uh, pick up autonomous driving. Uh, it can it can it can happen quickly. Right now, technology still is far from being being launched. There's there's a lot of work happening. Of course, there are lots of uh, uh, concerns that one would have in autonomous driving. Uh, Mahindra, uh, frankly, has not invested too much uh, of uh, its effort other than being abreast of what's happening uh, around the world. We have not put in a lot of our effort, of course, in the Mahindra Rise Innovation Prize. Uh, one of the things is for driverless yes. car, uh, which we're working on right now. And uh, we have gotten some very interesting entries from across India 
for that and we are evaluating as to which two or three we take forward as a prototype. But other than that, we have not really been involved, involved in a lot. We are watching the technology and when the time is right, we will get involved. Uh, but uh, uh, India could surprise us. And talking about that, uh, since you, EVs is a key focus area, when uh, Elon Musk you know, opened up his uh, patent uh, kind of uh, trove, uh, did uh, M&M uh, kind of look at if there is anything from there which... Uh, right, now, right now, I think what we need for the segment that we are in, we have technology with us. Uh, we have several patents in, uh, in electric vehicle sphere that we are, we are using for our products and in fact we have few things that others don't have. Uh, so, so we have not, uh, I mean, we, again, same thing, we're generally aware of what's happening, but we have not gotten into tapping into a specific patent and said we would like to use it for our product.